Hello! Now, can you use herbal teas as high blood pressure remedies? Can you use herbal teas to actually control your high blood pressure at home? That's what's coming up next, so stay tuned. I'll see you after the channel intro. Now, for today's 2020 idea to better health, please welcome on stage Dr. Joe. Hello, welcome back. I'm Dr. Joe of the DrJoe.com. So today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you seven herbal teas that I use to actually manage my own blood pressure at home. And I see no reason why you too cannot use these herbal teas to actually manage your own high blood pressure. Now, I'm gonna leave links in the video description if you're interested and you wanna access these herbal teas. Uh, the links will be there in the video description. Uh, it will take you to a resource where you can actually access these teas affordably. Now, before we get into the meat of this presentation, can I just make a request, please? If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet, well, the subscription button is just right there. Uh, we'll encourage you to subscribe because that way you get access to 2020 ideas that I actually share on this channel. Now, can you use these herbal teas to actually control your blood pressure at home? And if so, how do they work? So, let's get into the meat of this presentation now straight away. So, let's talk about herbal teas as natural remedies for high blood pressure. Can you actually control your high blood pressure using these herbal teas? And if so, how do they work? Well, the answer to that question is yes, you can. Herbal teas can actually constitute part and parcel of the strategies that you can use to optimize your blood pressure. But there's a little caveat there. Uh, you cannot use the teas exclusively. Uh, these teas are there to actually provide you with a helping hand to whatever else you may be doing. So things like eating the right foods, avoiding the foods you should avoid, uh, and also exercise as well. All of these things work together synergistically to help you to control your high blood pressure. Remember, these are teas. Uh, it, you know, these teas are herbal beverages. Uh, it's a bit like drinking water to survive. You have to drink water anyway, so you might as, <laughs> might as well drink water with some herbal remedy in it. I actually refer to these teas as enhanced water. So some people say water is boring. Well, drink water. And enhanced water like this and you could be giving your blood pressure a helping hand so what herbal teas are there that you can actually use to control your high blood pressure well the first one is cat's claw tea no it's not that one uh, it's actually made from this plant uh, and there are two varieties one is uh, Oncaria tomentosa and the second one is Oncaria ganensis if you've got cat's claw, uh, it's probably going to be made from uh, one of these uh, uh, varieties. Now, cat's claw actually has phytochemicals that will boost your immune system. Uh, it's got cancer-fighting properties and it's been actually proven to kill viruses as well. And from the blood pressure point of view, cat's claw actually it, you know, improves the kidney's filtering functions, which means it contracts the blood volume, which means your heart has less work to do when it has to pump blood uh, from inside it into the blood vessels. Now, cat's claw has all sorts of uses. Uh, for instance, it's used for osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, gastritis, uh, which is inflammation of the stomach, herpes, and shingles as well. Now, because the blood pressure lowering effect of uh, cast claw is so good, uh, it does interact with all of these blood pressure medications. So, medications like hydrochlorothiazide, losartan, captopril, enalapril, valsartan, diltiazem, amlodipine, furosemide. If you're using any of this, it's a good idea to actually let your doctor know that you'll be using cast claw tea. Uh, because of the uh, potential for your blood pressure to drop too low if you're combining uh, using a cat's claw tea with these medications. Now, the next herbal tea that I want to talk about is actually called uh, hibiscus tea. Now, if you grew up in the tropics like I did, uh, when you woke up in the morning and you opened your windows and you had a look outside and you saw this hibiscus flower, you knew you were going to have a good day. That's how beautiful this plant is. So when later on in life, I found out that we could actually make tea out of this, I told myself I have to have it. Now, 
hibiscus tea, uh, you know, it's sweet and it's got a starty flavor and it's got a red color just like cranberry. As you can see there, uh, it's, it's a really beautiful color that is quite inviting. Now, does hibiscus tea actually reduce high blood pressure? Well, this has actually been studied. Uh, Diane McKay and her colleagues actually carried out a six-week study and they found that drinking hibiscus tea every day actually did reduce the uh, systolic blood pressure. The systolic bl blood pressure is the top value, uh, but the effect on the diastolic, the lower value, was a little bit minimal. Uh, and from their findings, they actually recommended that we should be drinking hibiscus tea every day, especially for those with mild hypertension. Is you know, it's a very simple strategy that these individuals can use to reduce their blood pressure. And also for those who've got prehypertension as well. The next tea I want to talk about is Hawthorne tea. This is a very nice herbal tea for high blood pressure. Uh, this Hawthorne plant is actually a wholesome plant, which means the leaves, the flowers, the berries all have uh, healing properties. And the Chinese have actually used it as a digestive aid for centuries. Uh, for that reason, Hawthorne tea is actually useful for menstrual problems and digestive problems, like I said earlier on, and is also ideal for anxiety as well. But it's the effect of Hawthorne tea on the circulatory system that we actually love. Hawthorne tea is effective for irregular heartbeat, and it actually reduces cholesterol and triglycerides uh, levels, which means it prevents hardening of the arteries, what we call atherosclerosis. More importantly, Hawthorne tea actually relaxes the blood vessel walls and that means it will help you to reduce your high blood pressure. And this is what we love about the Hawthorne tea. The next herbal tea for high blood pressure I want to talk about is chamomile tea. The tea is actually made from the flowers of the chamomile plant and there are two types. There's the Roman chamomile and there's also the German chamomile and if you've got any chamomile tea around at all it's probably going to be from one of these two now chamomile flowers contain polyphenols uh, compounds such as the apigenin quercetin patulatin as well as luteolin and chamomile tea is actually good for high blood pressure because it's got its anti-anxiety properties and it also enhances your sleep as well it makes you sleep better and as you know Anything that reduces anxiety and also makes you sleep better would be good for your high blood pressure. And that's why I would recommend chamomile tea. Next tea is rooibos tea. Red bush tea is also called as well. Uh, this is a South African delight and it's been used in South Africa for centuries. And now is the South Africans have made it available for the rest of us to enjoy all over the world. Rooibos tea has this earthy flavor and it's got a color that is similar to the hibiscus tea. Now, rooibos tea is an oxidized and fermented tea, just like black tea. I've done a video where I talked about the difference between green tea and black tea. And the, the one essential difference between green tea and black tea is that black tea is oxidized and fermented. And indeed, rooibos tea uh, follows the same pathway as well of production. Robust tea uh, contains polyphenols, including the flavonols and flavones, and in particular, there's one uh, polyphenol called aspartame. Now, this aspartame polyphenol actually prevents vascular inflammation, and we've also found that robust tea has got this calming effect on the mind and body, and it also helps uh, with sleep quality. From personal experience, I can tell you that when I drink robust tea, I tend to sleep like a baby. If it works for me, I see no reason why it shouldn't actually work for you. The next herbal tea for high blood pressure I want to talk about is lemon balm tea. Uh, lemon balm tea hails from the mint family. It's got medicinal properties that's been exploited for centuries. And it could be used alone on its own or in combination with other herbs. Uh, lemon balm tea is good for upset stomach, bloating, gas issues, menstrual cramps, uh, vomiting, colic, autoimmune diseases, as well as thyroid problems and ADHD. Lemon balm tea is good for anxiety, it's good for sleep, and it's also good for restlessness. All of these uh, mind-calming effects of the lemon balm tea uh, is why it's actually good for your high blood pressure. 
the next herbal tea that is good for high blood pressure that I want to talk about is green tea. Now, green tea is very popular. It's not unfamiliar to you. Uh, but there's a little caveat there when it comes to green tea that I'm going to talk about shortly. Green tea comes from a plant uh, called Camellia sinensis, and it's been around with us for centuries as well. And we've always known that it's got healing properties. Uh, studies have actually shown that green tea does improve some of the main risk factors for cardiovascular diseases. So we're talking about things like total cholesterol, the bad cholesterol called LDL cholesterol, as well as triglycerides. What this means is uh, green tea will prevent the hardening of your uh, arteries. And if your blood vessels are not hardened, then of course they'll be a lot more pliable, which means your blood pressure will be lower. And what is responsible for this activity is this polyphenol called epigallocatechin 3 gallate uh, and that's the reason why green tea is actually beneficial a lot of the benefits that green tea bestows on the human body actually arises from the fact that it's got this polyphenol this epigallocatechin 3 gallate now here is the caveat of all the teas i mentioned earlier on none of them has got caffeine they're all caffeine free but green tea is a caffeinated tea which means if you're going to drink tea if you're going to drink green tea i should say for high blood pressure control then you have to go for the decaffeinated variety this is very important because if you drink the regular green tea it's going to be counterproductive as far as your blood pressure control is concerned so this is something you should bear at the back of your mind if you're going to use green tea as a herbal tea for high blood pressure drink the decaffeinated variety well, next, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can actually get the best out of these uh, herbal teas. Uh, but just to prove the point that I actually do these things, that I have these teas at home, well, here we are. Let me just uh, show them to you. This is the first one. This is Hawthorne tea. Okay, Hawthorne tea. I've got that uh, in the house. This is uh, hibiscus, one of my favorites. Okay, hibiscus tea. Got that. Uh, this is the South African delight, <laughs> red bush tea. Okay, red bush, lovely, lovely tea. Uh, and this is a uh, chamomile tea, chamomile tea. Okay, that's that. Uh, what, what else we got? Well, this is my uh, green tea. And I, like I said in the video, uh, it's gotta be the decaffeinated variety, okay? This is the decaffeinated green tea. What else we got? Uh, this is the lemon balm tea, lemon balm tea. All right, got that as well. Uh, this is the cat's claw tea, okay, cat's claw. Um, now I've got a bonus one here. This one is uh, a ginger tea. Uh, I didn't talk about this in the uh, in the video. So, what can you do to actually get the best out of these teas? Well, I've already given you one tip as far as the uh, green tea is concerned. It's got to be the decaf one. All the other teas are caffeine free, so you don't have to worry about, about uh, caffeine in any of them. But for green tea, it's got to be decaffeinated. Uh, now, the second tip is that if you are somebody who likes to drink your tea very light, so you get a tea bag, get, put it into the boiled water uh, and take it out after just about 10 seconds, that's not going to cut it here. Uh, you need to allow these teas to brew. So you need to leave the tea bag in the water for at least, at least five minutes. Okay, five minutes minimum. The third tip is that, uh, you know, we're very busy uh, and we all go to work as well. So uh, what I would suggest is why don't you take some of these teas, have them at your workplace. So instead of drinking other beverages like Diet Coke, uh, you might as well be drinking this stuff, right? These herbal teas. Uh, that way you're going to get, you know, all the, uh, the, the herbs you need over a 24 hour period. The next tip I'm going to give comes from that other tip as well. Sometimes I'm, I'm so busy at work and I don't get to drink these teas. So what I do is when I get home, I do what I call the combination tea therapy. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, I will have about four different types in one single cup of tea. So I will have the, uh, the uh, lemon balm tea. Uh, I'll put the cat's claw, you know, one bag each. And then I'll put the hibiscus as well. Uh, and uh, always, you know, the totally uh, red bush tea. I'll have all of those in one single cup. That way I know that I haven't missed out on my tea, any of these for uh, the 24 hour period. 
that's how you actually get the best out of these uh, herbal teas okay so that's about it as far as this video is concerned if you like this video please give it a thumbs up uh, hit the like button and also share it with a family member or a friend that way you'll be caring for them sharing is caring uh, if you've got anything to say say it in the comment section okay and also uh, like I said there's gonna be links in the description uh, if you want to access th these teas uh, links will be there and just a reminder again if you haven't subscribed yet uh, please do subscribe the subscription button is just right there uh, i think that's about it as far as this video is concerned until next time uh, well this is dr joe signing out